Good morning, Pally. Today is Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. I'm Vincent Wong. And I'm Beck Lyons. Hey, Beck, how are college applications going? There's only eight days left. I am so screwed. Teachers, please give no homework this week. The Pally Varsity Girls Volleyball team just finished off an undefeated regular season, 11-0, and, and clinched the SCVAL League Championship. They kick off their CCS playoff run this weekend. In Focus reporter Brooke Brettenstein caught up with the team and their head coach to learn more about the team's successful season. Volleyball is a little talked about sport, which is a shame when it comes to our own amazing varsity team. So far, the Pally Varsity Volleyball team has had 14 wins and one loss, usually crushing the opponents 3-0. This is a great increase of wins since last year. I think I'm trying to do a few things a little bit different than we did last year. I'm trying to make sure that I'm being positive as often as possible, being encouraging, and trying to keep pushing the girls to accomplish great things. We have five new girls on varsity this year, so three of them have come up from JV, so I've been able to see them for a few years, but we have a freshman on varsity and a sophomore transfer from varsity and they've both been really great additions to our team both in terms of personality and in terms of skill. I think our team is doing well because we all work well together and I think we trust each other and we have a lot of fun. And I think we come into each game with energy and every set with energy and we never back down. After teaching volleyball for 30 years, Coach Crater has a good idea of what the most important parts of volleyball are. I think volleyball's a pretty different sport from a lot of other sports. It's really fast-paced with a bunch of people in a very small area. So I think team chemistry becomes really, really important. Communication becomes really, really important. Uh, we work on individual skills some of the time, and then we just work on putting it all together and playing together as a team. Every team has its strengths and weaknesses. Here's what Coach Crater has to say about them. I think one of the biggest strengths for our varsity team this year is our team chemistry and our confidence. We have a way to inspire each other to play well, especially when things get tight, and that's a really good time to play well. I think uh, being a little bit more consistent with our serving and passing is going to continue to help us, and we're continuing to try to improve our defense too. Overall, the team is outstanding at many things and could one day even hold their own spot on the gym wall of fame. Come out to our games. <laughs> With InFocus, I'm Brooke Breitenstein. Thanks, Brooke. The Pally Mina Club is a group at Pally with an aim to create a safe space for underrepresented Middle East and North African students on campus. InFocus reporter Declan Baker has more. Pally's new Mina Club focuses on the appreciation of Middle Eastern and North African culture. They have created a safe space for students to collaborate with their local clubs, integrate their history into curriculums, and overall highlight MENA culture. The MENA Club's Vice President, Ariana Ebrahimi, shares her thoughts on why the club is an important contribution to Pally's environment. We, me and Nikki and Miriam wanted to start this club because um, we just felt like there's like the community of Middle Eastern people is so small in Palo Alto and just at the school specifically also. And um, we just like really want there to be like a safe space for the few Middle Eastern people that there are. During their first meeting, co-president Mariam Tayebi told us the club's plans for the years to come. We're going to have fundraisers for different natural disasters and other um, events that have happened in the Middle East. We're going to have guest speakers and we're going to have a multicultural event with different cultural clubs at Pali. And we're also going to be doing work to get MINA represented in the education Tayebi and Ebrahimi spoke to us about how Middle Eastern and North Africans lack the representation in both daily life and in the census. Um, Mina culture, for example, there's a super small uh, population at Pali, so it's really easy for us to get ignored, which is why we created this club in the first place, so that um, Middle Eastern students could have a place where they could uh, feel represented and have people of their culture in a community. So we really want um, ethnic studies, the ethnic studies the committee of people who are um, making the course to be required in, um, for the freshman of 2025. We really just want them to be able to recognize Middle Eastern and North Africans um, as a minority because if we were by government counted as a minority, then the story would be different in my opinion. I feel like we would have already been included in the course. But um, since because of that mislabeling, we are, are not included. And like we're really pushing to be because also there's so much work being done to create um, it, MENA as its own race. And so I believe that if there's work being done towards that, then it equally should be um, like demonstrated in the ethnic studies courses that are going to be required. 
The club currently has open positions for secretary and treasurer, so if you're interested, come to the next meeting on October 26th in room 808. I'm Declan Baker, and this has been In Focus. Thanks, Declan. The window to sign up for this week's prime period ends tomorrow at noon. Make sure to sign up to avoid being placed randomly. The Pali Campanile newspaper is distributing the second cycle of the year today. Come by the first floor of the Mac to pick up a copy. That does it for today's show. Follow us on social media at InFocus News to engage with our content and visit our website to view today's campus bulletin. Until next time, I'm Vincent Wong. And I'm Beck Lyons. This has been InFocus News. Have a great day, Vikings.